Season X has been full of massive changes to the game's mechanics, for better or worse. The combat came and went, the map has basically been turned on its head, and brutes have, well, stayed the same. Thankfully, something that seems to be changing for the better is the loot pool. Everyone's been asking for a change, and with the changes in the past few weeks, people are running drastically different loadouts than they were before. That's why in this video, we'll take you through the best loadouts for Season 10. What's up guys, it's Dan, and before we get into this one, you know the drill. Visit ProGuys.com for 24-7 on-demand coaching from some of the best of the best. We added all new exclusive guide videos for pro members, as well as all the up-to-date news articles from your favorite pro, so don't miss out. Click that link down below, smash the like button, and let's dive right in. Overall, what makes a gun good is consistency. Think about it, a tactical SMG can potentially do 300 plus damage in seconds, but are you really going to hit someone for that much? Probably not. With a pump, though, you're likely to hit for at least 80, but most pro players are hitting consistent numbers upwards of 120 plus on every shot. Every gun or utility that we'll mention in this video won't be something hard to find and is actually effective. What many people seem to not understand is the vast importance of specialty of different weapons. What do I mean here? Comparing the gold infantry rifle to a blue AR would be pitiful. Everyone knows the gold infantry rifle hits crazy high damage numbers, but only has a smaller clip, meaning it's more effective long range. The blue AR is more of a mid-long range weapon with consistent numbers, but can also be effective at closer ranges. So the first thing we need to talk about is how to balance a loadout. Your optimal loadout needs a balance of close medium range effectiveness. I know a weapon that hits super far may make a huge difference, but in a real game scenario, most fights come down to medium range fights. All level lobbies revolve around box fights and the like, and AR is always necessary because let's be real, what use is an SMG from far? The loadout must also include some sort of healing item and a utility. In fact, look back just a few seasons ago and the majority of players would carry an SMG, AR, and pump. Nowadays, pros have made it a habit to work with an AR and pump. The added utility slot really helps over having another spray weapon. Pro players are assumed to hit their first shots and can finish the enemy off with an AR. SMG spray was a thing of the past and is not as effective as it used to be. Or maybe it is since they brought back the tactical SMG. Well, anyways. The healing item will vary based on what you pick up because ideally if you have shields, you'll end up taking them if you have a med kit. Same thing. It's important to note, your loadout should change a bit depending on your playstyle. Everyone shouldn't be running with the exact same guns. Also, not everybody is fortunate enough to get super solid loadouts due to that added RNG factor. There is, however, a way to turn RNG in your favor. Most pro players always make it to endgame with solid loadouts, and you might ask yourself why. It's simple, there are certain drop spots which have better weapon loot than others. Pro players also make it a habit to finish off one to two other players before going endgame, so their loot pool chance doubles. In the pro meta, there have been lots of players using only two weapons and leaving the rest for heals, shockwaves, and some other throwables. Now that everyone is turtling up in the end zone and staying protected, most fights take place in two ranges, really close or really far. That's why super long ranged weapons are being used less and less. They just don't work for the state the game is in right now. Don't get me wrong, they still work super well, but the cases where you're shooting someone from 60 meters away in an open field aren't prevalent anymore. Love it or hate it, most fights these days consist of spraying people's walls and turtle fighting, and that's why you want to use weapons that maximize your damage in that short-ranged area. So that's why you'll see pro players using an AR and a shotgun, as I mentioned before. In duos and trios, on the other hand, your loadout should look a little bit different. Every person in a trio has a role, so your loadout should reflect that. Let's say you're that player that likes to stay back, take shots from far away, and play the support role. Or what if you're the super aggressive player that always pushes first, then take the RPG. That's something that you should establish with your team before you get into a game. Anyway, we've been talking about throwables a lot in this video, so which one should you be using? Well, it depends on how you're going to play the game, so right now we'll break them all down. Let's first go over which ones you should be picking up right now, because recently Epic has been adding tons of them. The number one utility in the game right now is shockwave grenades. They're just impulses on steroids and give you instant height in any end zone. In this current meta, shockwaves are a must-have. Just throw one down and you'll instantly be skyrocketed to the top level. They're used similarly to bounce pads way back when. They'd be insane just because of that, but that's not to mention that they can be used for some pretty sick plays. Number two, shield bubbles, when used strategically, can also make for really clutch plays. I mean, they might not be as fun as shockwaves, but there's undoubtedly a place in the game for them. They're basically the perfect counter for third partying, which has been a considerable problem recently. They can also be used to revive a teammate instead of having a spam build. Just throw one down in the middle of a fight and the outside players won't be able to touch you. If they want to get a kill, they'll have to run inside the bubble and risk getting killed by you or another player. In addition to this, there's also been a little trick going around that lets you stick a shield bubble to your own body. 
I know, sounds OP, right? It is so frustrating getting stanked 10 times in a row and having to waste so many mats to tunnel out of it. If you've got them though, you're a godsend for countering turtles. A player's first response when they get hit with one is panic, which will almost always lead to them rushing out of their box and putting you in a better position for the kill. It's less about actually killing someone and more about forcing them out of their current position. They also come in handy during a small endgame zone, where you just throw them down from height for some chip damage. A difference of even 5 damage can change a crushing second place into a victory royale. Think about how easy rotations will be when you literally can't get shot from anywhere more than a few meters away from you. The loadouts we're going to show you is really consistent, and all the items aren't super hard to find. Mongrel has been using this one recently because it fits the high-paced playstyle and guarantees you some free kills from height, which I'll explain later on. The first gun is a pump. If you got a pump, then you're in business. It's one of the most consistent guns in the game and deals such high damage. If you prefer the epic or legendary tack, then that'll work too, but you can't hit for 200 damage even with a gold tack. The next gun you should be carrying is the tactical SMG. I mean, come on guys, who doesn't love this gun? Well, anyone on the receiving end obviously won't. It's a classic from way back and absolutely melts through walls. This is the gun that you'll want to use to just spray people with. It's even hard to turbo build against, making it a deadly counter to turtling. The suppressed SMG is excellent as well. It can't entirely melt walls like TAC SMG, but its damage is way more severe. For anyone playing with aim assist, this gun is even better. But you should never be using an SMG as your primary close range weapon. The main purpose of this gun is to pressure people and break their walls, or finish them off. The shotgun is what you're going to get those big 200 damage shots with, so always have it at the ready. As for the medium long range gun, there are so many options in the game right now. Of course, both the SCARs and AKs are excellent options. They both have the perfect range and some considerable damage. Although, you wouldn't want to be caught in a close range fight spraying with an AK since its bloom is just massive. Something else we've seen pros using a lot more is the infantry rifle. It's got so many good qualities, high range, quick fire rate, and virtually no bloom. Although, it really rewards good aim, so be careful if you've got that spray and pray season 1 type thing going. Let's see its effectiveness in Mongrel's hands. My thoughts exactly. Better yet, the infantry basically acts as a sniper too. Remember how I mentioned how good this loadout was on height? That's because of this gun. It absolutely dominates when being used from high ground. The last two slots are entirely dependent on your playstyle and what you want to use there, but I highly recommend to have at least one quick healing item like a slurp, minis, or chug splash. As for the other, shockwaves, heavy snipers, and shield bubbles are all really great options depending on whichever you prefer. They all fit super well for the current turtle meta and make playing endgame much easier. Shield bubbles usually fit the players with a more defensive playstyle, while shockwaves, heavies, and miniguns will probably work better for the aggressive players. But always remember that coming across certain items that are always going to be different depending on the game, no matter what, the goal is to make it work. To adapt this loadout for duos or trios, just add a heavy sniper and RPG into the mix and you'll be getting some free kills. In fact, you can really add anything that will help out your team. The reason heavies and RPGs are so great is that they can be used in coordination for some super effective strategies. I mean, you guys already know about the heavy sniper plus RPG combo. I mean, there are many variations on this from the double heavy strat to the heavy AR strat. It works wonders and shows how loadouts can be effective with teamwork as well. It's too easy. Even though the strategy is so common, it's still completely unpredictable. Check out how Mitro and Benji Fishy use this double RPG and heavy RPG strategy in the trio's cash cup. Double RPG here, three, two, one, go! Don't not! Double RPG again, reload, reload! Three, two, one, go! Gotta finish, I killed them! Okay, yeah, follow, yeah, I'm following, I'm following! Throughout the tournament, they were using their loadouts to their advantage, and they went on to win four out of eight games. So, what it comes down to is utilizing your loadout based on the scenario. Some games you won't get super optimal loadouts, so you probably want to either try and get a few kills for an upgrade or play it out more carefully. Most pro players use three utilities with an AR and a shotgun. This is the ideal loadout you want to use because it's just super active. Everyone's so focused on why the game is so bad or some crazy new building techniques, and loadouts seem to go unmentioned. That's why we tried to provide some insights into which items you should be running. Now that Epic is focused on switching around the loot pool so much, it's hard to stay on track with what's right anymore. Of course, play with what works for you, but some items in the game today are just flat out better than others. Time and time again, players are running around with way too many guns and no heals or throwables, and they don't realize how it's affecting them. 
It's so easy to watch pro players win and forget that they've thought about their loadout even before they dropped into the game. So, did these tips help you? If they did, then consider dropping a like on this video and even subscribing. We really appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and good luck with your Fortnite grind.